Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Financial Planning for Veterans College Education webinar. We are so excited that you're here with us this morning, and we're going to give you guys lots of really, really great information. So before we go on, let me get my mouse going here. All right. I just want to go through a couple quick housekeeping items before we get started, make sure we're on the same page. Um, please be advised that this webinar is being recorded and you joining the webinar does give consent to that recording. Um, your mute and your video are actually um, disabled for this webinar and that's really to help us with the bandwidth as we go through um, all the slides today. Um, where um, while um, the, the mute and the video are disabled, you'll still be able to ask questions um, as needed. My colleague, Tara Ireland, is more kind of running the, the back of the show here. She's going to be putting in lots of different um, website links and different information in the chat function. And then you guys will able, be able to utilize the Q&A button that you see either at the top or the bottom of your screen. And as you ask questions, uh, Tara will either be able to answer them and um, respond right back to you, or um, we will save your question till the end of the webinar and we'll go through them out loud. That way um, everybody can hear the answers because most likely if you have this question and you're asking it, probably someone else has this question as well. So it'll be great information. Um, if for some reason you have to leave or you get kicked off for some reason, just use that same link that um, that you use to join us today to just join us right back on. Um, and then also, um, we'll be putting these slides um, in PDF form into the chat um, periodically throughout the presentation. That way you guys can download it. There's going to be lots of really great information, lots of um, website links, um, different resources that you guys will want to go visit later. So um, if you guys get the um, the slides, you can just click on them. Um, and then if you have any questions along the way, feel free to use that Q&A tab. You will not be able to use the chat tab. We're going to save that um, so that Tara can add in um, all this great information for you guys and links and things. Um, and then um, um, so today what we're going to be talking about, um, the agenda overview, I'm going to be giving you guys a lot of really great resources on where you can find scholarships. Um, I bet you didn't know, but there are scholarships designated for each branch of the military. And we're going to talk about them all and give you guys all the links so you guys can go check them out later and um, get some free money that can help you out with school um, and all the things. Um, and then we're going to talk about all of the education benefits that CalVet offers and kind of how to um, utilize the benefits to um, the most of their capabilities. And then we're going to talk about the higher education system here in California. We're so lucky in California. We have um, community colleges, state schools, and UCs. We're going to kind of talk about um, the differences between them very quickly and, um, you know, what are what are the great things about them. So um, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, I first kind of want to talk about um, that um, it's, you know, uh, we want to make sure that you know the differences between all the different levels, um, as it can be kind of a little confusing when you have questions and trying to figure out who you're supposed to call to get your um, military related questions answered. So um, at the top, you have um, the US Department of Veterans Affairs or the federal side. And then every state most likely has its own Department of Veterans Affairs. So while you're living here in California, you'll be able to use our department, which is called CalVet. Um, that's our logo right there. And then we take it a step further. So there's actually a county level and we call them County Veteran Service Offices. We use the acronym a lot, CVSO. So we have County Veteran Service Offices. And then we use the other acronym for County Veteran, or I'm sorry, excuse me. We have the other acronym for Veteran Service Officer and they run the County Veteran Service Offices. So you have the VSOs, running the CVSOs, kind of a lot of acronyms. I know it can get a little confusing, but the, the CVSOs are really great resource and we heavily rely on them. Um, they can do all kinds of things. They can um, talk to you about your claim status. They can help you with your disability rating, getting that established, 
or later on, if, you know, things happen and things get exacerbated, um, that can help you kind of refresh that claim and see if um, your disability rating either needs to maybe go up. Um, they can help you with that. They can help you fill out any form or application that's veteran related. Um, lots of really great benefits for keeping in touch with your um, with your local CVSO and we can help you find that office. You can just give us a call. Um, and then there's always the service providers that all of the levels work with. Um, listed below, we have some of our common ones that we work with, the DAV, the Disabled American Veterans, um, Swords to Plowshares, the American Legion, and also VFW Veterans of Foreign Wars. So Lots of um, really great stuff on the veteran side. And just to show you some differences, I'm a visual person. We like to have um, visual aids for you guys. Um, so there's three different administrations within the, uh, the federal side of the VA, um, the Health Administration, Benefits Administration, and Cemetery Administration. And then with CalVet, when you're living here in California, you can utilize all the different benefits that you can access. And we're actually going to talk about those today. Uh, but those, that's kind of everything listed out. And um, like I said, if you want these slides, um, we can send them to you. Um, we can either email them to you later or you can download them when we put them in the chat. And if you're going through this and you have questions um, later and want us to go more in detail, definitely reach back to us. We're more than happy um, to go through um, any questions that you might have. You're going to see our phone number quite a bit um, in, the, um, in the presentation, also at the very end too. Okay, so I'm here today to talk to you guys kind of about what CalTAP is and how uh, we can kind of help you learn about your benefits and resources. So you're probably wondering what CalTAP is. Um, so um, as I said earlier, um, gosh, I'm not even sure if I introduced myself, but my name is Jana Adams and I'm a training coordinator on the CalTAP team or the California Transition Assistance Program team at CalVet. So what we do as training coordinators is we um, are the outreach. We are out and about. We're going to um, DOD installations. We're going to community colleges. We're going to different events. We're also making these presentations online. And the goal is that we are informing and connecting veterans of all eras to their earned state and federal benefits. And we take it a step further because we want you to know that we are going to provide continuous support and assistance because we know that the benefits and the resources that you need right now are going to be different than what you're going to need in two years, in 10 years, maybe even in 25 years from now. So the way that we're able to provide this continuous support, not only by you contacting us whenever you need us, is we put all of our information um, on our website in our veterans resource book. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that later. Um, but we put um, all of our information on our website in five, what we like to call pathways of information. So we have our core curriculum. I'm going to go through that with you um, in just a couple of minutes. That tells you all your benefits and resources. We have the education pathway. I'm also going to go over that with you today. We have employment pathway. That's going to um, let you know um, all the different things that you need to do to get a state job and a federal job. It's also going to talk about um, all of your pre-marketing things like um, your resume writing and um, you know interview prep, things like that. It's going to help you with. Um, entrepreneurship pathway, that's going to help um, you from start to finish on um, starting your own business as a veteran. And then we also have a service providers pathway that actually gives information on how to work with veterans and how to assist them. Okay, so we do all this because we realize that from when you join the military all the way up until um, the very end of your life, you're going to go through lots of things. You're going to need um, lots of benefits and resources, and you're going to have lots of different stages in your life. Um, this visual kind of shows you what we like to kind of, uh, what we like to call our, um, our life cycle map. And this goes through all the different stages from joining until all the way um, to your last days and all the different things um, that are in between, all the different uh, benefits and resources and all the different stages of your life and what you're going to need. So we want to help you with that. Um, and one of the ways that we do that is not only by putting our information on our website, but also we have what's called a veteran resource book. Um, here is the QR code for the veteran resource book. And just in case um, someone doesn't know how to use a QR code, you just open up your phone, um, your camera on your phone, and you hover over that QR code and it'll give you a, um, a website that you can click on. When you click on that, it gives you the veterans resource book right on your phone. You can download it and you can have it. Um, if you want a live copy, you can contact us and we can mail you one for free or we can mail you two for free. They're completely free. So, um, and we, we definitely want to get the word out. Um, um, this book is like gold, you guys. It has 
every single benefit and resource listed right inside this book. And on the back of the book, there is a 1-800 number. You're going to see it a couple of times today, but that actually does get us on the phone. Like I said, we're on the outreach team. So we're talking to veterans all the time. We actually do answer our phones um, when they do ring. Mine won't ring during this webinar, of course, but normally it probably would. So this is our veterans resource book. Um, it's like I said, it's like gold. It has everything listed in there. Okay, so this is our website. Um, all you have to do is Google CalVet. Um, we're probably the first search that comes up when you Google CalVet. This is what our website looks like. And all the information I'm gonna talk to you about today is going to be when you scroll through the website, you see the laptop um, symbol right over there, and then you see CalTap. So all of our information is going to be right in that CalTap button that you press. Um, when you scroll all the way down at the very bottom of the website, you're going to see another red circle on there for the Veterans Resource Book. That's going to let you click on the Veterans Resource Book so it's right on our website as well. And um, you'll probably see it a couple more times uh, with the QR code too. And then if you guys need to find your local CVSO or County Veterans Service Office, you can just call us. Um, there is that number that's right at the top, contact CalVet, 800-952-5626. You'll see that a bunch of times today. Um, we can actually help you find your um, the office that's near you. Um, that way you can get a hold of them. Okay, so what are your California benefits? Um, well, living in California, um, you have an array of benefits that you can take advantage of. Most of them, you already have to have a disability rating established to be able to take advantage of these benefits and be able to utilize them. Um, I'm going to go over just a couple details about each one, and if you have any questions about them, you are more than welcome to contact us afterwards, and we can go through um, the benefits with you, whatever questions that you have if we don't answer them um, during this webinar. But we have the college tuition fee waiver, and this is by far the benefit that gets the most questions and probably one of our best benefits that we offer. You guys, with this benefit, you are able to send your dependents to school from all the way from their general education all the way up to their doctorate should they choose to go that high without having to pay tuition or fees at any um, state-funded school. So any um, California community college, California state school, or California UC. Uh, there are four ways to qualify. I'm going to go over all those qualifications during our education section just here in a little bit, but um, really great program. Um, it's designed so that way um, your dependents can go to school without having to pay that cost. Um, you can actually get the word veteran listed on your driver's license. Um, all you do is you take your 214 and a photo ID. You go to a county veteran service office. Like I said earlier, we can help you find that office if you don't know where your local one is. Um, you go into them. Um, it's best to call them to make an appointment first, but they verify your 214 and then they sign a form for you. You take that signed form to the DMV and then the DMV is able to add that veteran designation right on your driver's license. You only have to do that once. Um, when you get your driver's license renewed, it should just renew right on there. Um, and it's a it doesn't cost anything. Uh, there used to be a five dollar fee, but that was waived um, a little over a year ago. Um, there is a motor vehicle registration fee waiver if you have a hundred percent disability rating that is directly related to a mobility issue. You can tie it to that. Um, that means um, that you would be able to waive one of your car registration fees. So if you have a truck, you can waive that truck registration fee. Um, you can also get reduced fishing and hunting licenses and a state parks pass at no cost. Um, if you want to look up all of the qualifications on that, it's in our resource book. It's right online, or you can call us. We can let you know where to find that. Um, there is also a disabled veteran property tax exemption. So tax exemptions are huge right now. Um, if you have questions on that, call us. Also, it's always a good idea to contact your county assessor's office to ask them about the tax exemptions as well. Um, and then we can always answer any questions beyond that as well. Um, so beyond the benefits and resources, we have a lot of really great divisions at CalVet. Um, one of them is our CalVet Home Loans Division. Did you guys know that CalVet has its own home loan that you can do? Um, it's actually different than the VA Federal Home Loan. So the VA Federal Home Loan is actually just a, um, it's a loan guarantee um, that works with whoever your lender is that yes, you will pay your mortgage. So it's, it's a guarantee. But with the CalVet home loan, you can still use that federal home, uh, this, still use the federal home loan with that guarantee and also do our CalVet home loan as well. So it's a double benefit basically for you. Um, really great rates. Um, we have a specialist that usually comes in um, to a lot of our presentations and talks about the home loan 
um, process um, with us. Um, his name is Brad Peterson and Tara is probably going to put his information in the chat. If you guys have any questions at all about um, home loans, or if you are in the process of maybe just starting to look for a home, maybe you're already mostly through the process and the great idea to just check out our program. Um, it can't hurt. Um, and also um, Brad um, heavily, um, I mean, he asks us um, to give out his phone number so that way, um, that way people can call him and ask him questions. So um, don't be shy on calling him if you have questions about home loans. Um, now we have a um, a women veterans division and also a minority veterans division at Calvet. Um, if you go to our website and go to the women veterans page or the minority page, you can actually sign up with your email address and um, you can get emails on um, it's for a roster. Um, and with that roster, you'll get lots of information. Um, you'll get emails of different events, things like that. Um, of just kind of what's going on in California. And then um, we also have eight veterans homes scattered all the way all over California. Probably not something that you're thinking about right now. Um, not for, um, it is um, retirement, of course. Um, a couple different um, uh, different qualifications. Um, depending on your disability, you do have to be 55 or, or, or older. Um, and then there are homes everywhere. There usually is a wait list. So it is something you wanna plan ahead for. Um, the homes are great. Um, it's based, the income that it's based on is your income. So um, it's um, it's just a percentage of your income. So really great um, if um, you're wanting to look into that for later in life. And then also for planning ahead, um, we do have, um, Calvet has its own cemeteries and there are um, burial resources that, um, that you can take advantage of. And it's always good to plan ahead. So all of that stuff is taken care of um, well ahead of time. Um, if you have questions on that, all the information is listed either in our veterans resource book, it's on our website, or you can always call us um, at any time and um, we can walk you through um, all the information. Okay, so there is lots of ways to stay connected with CalVet. Um, I know I just went over oh, just so much information overload with you guys about different benefits, but um, feel free to always email us at caltap at calvet.ca.gov with that email address. Um, somebody is checking it um, every single day, usually on the hour. So um, we will respond back pretty quickly. Um, and then if we don't know um, the answer to your question, we'll be able, we can either figure it out or we can tell you where to go for that. Um, we ask that you register for something we like to call My Calvet. So when you're on our website in any page, um, you can see um, it says My Calvet, either, um, either register or sign on. And basically it's a way to kind of tailor our website to different things that you would need. Um, and then it's also gonna send you information on things that would be tailored to information that you would need. So it's gonna ask you questions when you sign on, like, um, you know, when did you serve? What branch did you serve in? Um, do you have dependents? Um, have you utilized your GI Bill? Um, are you going to school? Are your dependents going to school? Have you bought a home? Things like that. So it can kind of gauge, you know, where you're at and um, what you would need. So um, it's a really great way to stay connected. And then if you sign up for my CalVet, you'll also get, um, usually we'll do um, something um, to the effect of like a, a monthly newsletter or um, sometimes kind of a weekly email that is going to talk about um, our different um, webinars and different presentations that we have going on. So that way you are you are continuously in the know of where you can find these resources and benefits and different information. Um, you can always find us on social media. You can see a bunch of QR codes right there. We have our Instagram and Facebook where we're always putting different things about CalVet, different events we're going on, um, all the different webinars um, that we host, like the one today that goes on our social media. Um, the QR code in the top left that says CalVet, that's the CalVet website. Um, and then in the bottom right, that is our YouTube channel. And you're probably wondering why we would have a YouTube channel, but that's because um, just like I said, right when I started this webinar, um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, we're able to take all of these recordings of our webinars and we're able to um, save them right onto our YouTube channel. We do put them on our website. However, because um, our department is constantly putting new things on the website, um, it runs out of room all the time. So um, our webinars, they don't live on the website forever, but on our YouTube channel, and it is a CalVet YouTube channel, um, these webinars will stay there forever. So that way you can always access the information 24 hours a day whenever you're needing it. And then finally, we ask that you attend our webinars. Um, at the end of this presentation, um, I'm going to show you guys a slide 
that has all the webinars. I think there's only one more for this month um, that's virtual, but then um, there's a whole slew of different really great webinars next month we'll go over. So, um, and then to take a step further, um, beyond the outreach that um, my team does, that Tara and myself do, we have what's called local interagency network coordinators, um, or we like to use the acronym LINK. Um, and these um, are links. There are eight of them, and they are spread out for the state. They, have, they each cover their own region. And um, the, all their email addresses are right on there. Um, and the, how their email addresses work, they're all at calvet.ca.gov. And then depending on where you live in California, um, it would be North Valley Link at Calvet or Central Valley Link. So just the initials, CV for Central Valley, IE for Inland Empire, as you can see on there. Um, and you're probably wondering kind of what do our links do? Well, gosh, they do so much. Um, they Well, they travel with us. They come to all of our presentations um, whenever they're live. So they're coming on to the bases with us. They're coming to the college campuses. Um, they're also, um, they're providing their own outreach to um, always to service members, um, veterans and their families. And then they're also making direct referrals to all kinds of different service providers that are out there. Um, they work directly with EDD, which is huge to know people at EDD. And then with the American Job Centers of California, they they know people at these places, so they're able to help you out when you need um, when you need help. Um, they're also always assisting with local emergencies. So um, there, um, whenever there's a local emergency, there's usually a Calvet table um, somewhere over there. Um, and then they're providing leadership um, out there and um, advocacy for all of you guys and your dependents. Um, if you, I mean, they are, they're building relationships to get discounts at places and get different benefits at places. I mean, so simple as, you know, you need a washer and dryer discounted rate, call the link. I bet you, he know he or she knows where to find that. Um, they are working um, even closer with our county veteran service offices than uh, my team is directly. So they know them very well. Of course, they're Calvet employees. So they're working directly with all of our different divisions. And then they're also um, on the healthcare side too. They're out there working with um, the different uh, VA medical centers and um, the vet centers as well. So they are an extremely great resource. Um, again, this is the map with all of their um, email addresses, but you can, um, if you want to talk to a particular link in your area, let us know where you are and we'll send you which link um, can get to you. So um, now I know you guys are here today to learn all about um, education things. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about some military scholarship foundation information. And um, what's so great is that every branch in the military is set up to have their own um, education things. So um, there are different education foundations um, and they are not federally funded. Um, so, um, and the scholarships, um, there is eligibility. Um, scholarships are specific to the student. So you do have to read through everything, make sure you qualify. Um, you wanna always, when you're looking at these scholarship websites, you just wanna make sure you read all the way through that make sure everything is still valid and everything, there isn't any um, dates or something that um, that the scholarship would lapse, something like that. Okay, so these, um, with these, I'm just gonna move my task bar up here really quick. I don't know if you guys can see me doing that, but I'm gonna put it at the bottom so I can see my whole slide here as I'm presenting. Okay, so um, the these are going to be for Army Scholarship Foundation. So you literally just go to this website and you can start clicking through. Um, lots of really, oh, I got to click on here. Let's see here. There we go. Um, so um, these are the different requirements. I'm not going to go through all the different requirements on, oh, wait, let me go back there. I'm trying to move my taskbar here. Sorry about that. I'm not going to go through all the different details on each one only because um, each one kind of has its own eligibility. So um, at the end of these slides, you're going to see a whole list of all the different websites. We can send them all to you. And Tara is going to be putting them in the chat right now as well. And again, just in case um, you forgot, I know I've said it a couple of times, we can send you these slides. Um, that way you have them and you can just click on them. Um, and there's QR codes on a lot of them too. So as I'm talking, you can um, put it on your phone and then you can save the webpage for later too. Um, but so as you can see, there are different eligibility requirements for the scholarship. This one is for Army. Okay. Um, we have the Navy League of the United States. Again, different scholarships. All you do is you go to these websites and you click on them. You click on apply now. It'll tell you everything what to do. Um, again, there's different um, eligibility requirements as well. 
Okay, this one is for um, the Marines. There is a scholarship foundation and you go to this website. There is um, lots of different things that you can click on, but apply now, but then you can also give as well. Um, and you, I imagine you can do that on all these different websites. Um, so these are the different requirements. Uh, as you can see, it um, it's for dependents and dependents count as, um, as children or stepchildren as well. So that's really great. Um, then there are also um, scholarships as well. This is a little bit more information on them. Um, um, it looks like applicants of fallen Marines, um, they um, will get their income requirements waived. So um, look for those kinds of details in whichever, um, whichever branch of scholarship you're looking for, just to make sure that you do qualify on that. Okay, this is for the Coast Guard Foundation. This is what the website looks like. Again, all these websites are really user-friendly. They just don't market these websites very much. So all of these scholarships, all this money is just hanging out. It's floating around. So you have to put a little bit of work into it. But um, but once you can apply for all of these, you can apply for as many scholarships as you want and as many grants as you want. Um, you don't have to pay those back. So uh, that's, what's so, that's what's so great about them. Um, this is the um, Airman Memorial Foundation Scholarship. Um, again, um, there's different eligibilities on these, um, and always, um, one that always stands out to me are deadlines. So make sure if there is a deadline on them that you are turning in your information, um, ahead of time. So that way it gets looked at. Although usually uh, with the military, you guys are already paying attention to details. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, this is for Air and Space Forces Association scholarships. Again, you just go right to the website. And um, you um, you can pick on um, whichever one you'd like. Um, okay, so these are DoD Smart scholarships. So this is almost um, for uh, really for everybody, which is so great. Um, if you go to this website, you can see there's lots of different things that you can click on. So we highly recommend um, that you do uh, that. Everybody now goes to this website. As you can see, there's a little tab up here that says grants. Um, make sure you go to this website. There is grants money out there and available. So um, make sure that you're going there. Um, let's see what else there is. Um, also, what's really great about the DOD Smart Scholarship is um, this one is if you want to pursue a STEM scholarship, it's going to help you. Um, it's going to help you a little bit further with that because usually with the with the STEM scholarships. We'll talk about them a little bit in the um, in the education section next, but you you have to take more units in order to graduate. So um, so it's really great that that's there for you. Okay, so a couple different things to remember. Um, we went through all those websites. I know pretty quickly. Um, however, um, make sure that you are asking if there are any waivers when it's appropriate. Um, so that means you've got to read all the details on all these scholarships. Um, there, like I said earlier, there's no limit to any number of scholarships or grants that you can apply for. Um, and then also don't forget that um, when you're a veteran yourself, if your parent is a veteran, you're also a dependent. So you might qualify for even more scholarships or grant being a veteran and also a dependent. Um, so make sure you don't forget about that. If you have questions on that, you can um, absolutely reach out to us, of course. So um, there are so many different scholarship opportunities. These are some different associations and societies that you can belong to. <laughs> and this is more, excuse me, um, I'm actually going to have a little sip of my coffee here. Mm. Excuse me. Thank you. This is going to be more um, to kind of get your name out there and to kind of meet people and see, you know, what else is out there. Because once you are talking to people and making connections, um, somebody might say, oh gosh, I know something that would absolutely be able to help you. So it's really great to, um, to uh, belong to these different associations and societies too. Okay, here, this is all the resources I told you um, was going to be on one of the screens. Um, like I said, we can, uh, we can send you this slide. We can send you all the slides. Um, but um, these are all the different websites for everything I just went over all on one slide. I don't know if people want to take a picture of it or not. Leave it up for just a couple more seconds here. Okay, we can always go back to it later too. Okay, so I'm um, taking it a little step further. There are some really, really great scholarship search engines. Okay, so this particular website, Career One Stop, um, we talk about it actually quite a bit. 
Um, this isn't a CalVet website. It's not like a, um, it, it's, it's not associated with us, but you can do so much on here. Not only can you um, ap apply for jobs, um, apply to take different trainings, um, explore um, all different kinds of different careers. Um, there's toolkits and resources for, um, you know, building your resume, interview techniques, different things like this. However, if you click on scholarship finder, as you can see here, there are all kinds of different scholarships. Um, and then you can start narrowing it down with, you know, um, with what would apply to you. However, but there are uh, so many different resources out there for you. So um, this is a really, really great website. We highly recommend you going to. Okay. College Recon, again, another amazing website. Um, this one um, is for scholarships for all veterans. So um, um, everybody can check this one out. Definitely a really great website to go see. And then there is scholarshipowl.com, another website. And this is one that I had never heard of for all of this, but um, this, uh, this, this website in particular also gives information on um, a lot of different school information. And um, I think there's some information about GI Bill too with this, with this particular website. So, um, and I never know how to say this, if it's my Scully or my schoolie, I'm not really sure. However you say it, um, you can get a scholarship out of it. So it doesn't matter how you say it. Um, definitely um, head to all of these websites, you guys, because like I said, you can you can apply for as many scholarships as you want. And sometimes they're reoccurring. Sometimes they're only once. But um, and sometimes they're small. Maybe the, um, one will be, you know, reoccurring four hundred dollars every semester where another one is, you know, five thousand dollars. But all of them added together will definitely make a difference. OK, so we've kind of talked about um, where you can find all of the benefits. Um, and then we talked about different kinds of scholarships um, and different kinds of grants and things like that. Um, so now um, what I want to talk about a little bit, spend a little time is um, different education benefits. And these are going to be all the different CalVet benefits that are offered. Um, and then we kind of want to talk to you guys a little bit, kind of how to like best practices, how you can kind of stretch your benefits a little, kind of some tips and tricks really. So um, when you Google CalVet, and you go to our website and you click on the CalTap page, it was the icon that had the laptop on it. This is the screen that you'll see. I don't think we showed you this earlier, but this is where all of our pathways are listed. So when I went over all the benefits a little bit ago, those are all listed in core curriculum pathway. So, but for um, this part of the presentation, we're gonna talk about the education pathway. And when you click on the education, oh, okay, sorry about that. There we go. When you click on the education pathway, you're going to see um, how we set up our, um, all of our information is in a module format. So um, these are the different modules for selecting a school, all the different educational benefits, and then information on higher education. So information about um, the community colleges, the state schools, and then also the UCs. Okay. So um, as most of you probably know, um, uh, we have the now what's called the forever GI Bill. Um, and this was changed. There used to be a 15 year limit on the GI Bill, but that changed back in 2001. So anyone that exited after now has access to the forever GI Bill. Um, you have all the benefits until you run out of them. Um, so that means there's no expiration date. Um, Purple Heart recipients are eligible for full GI Bill benefits, regardless of um, that previous um, three-year requirement of service. Um, and then any veterans who are affected by any school closures, um, the GI Bill will protect them from that and um, most likely you'll get all of your benefits back. Okay, so you're probably familiar um, with the GI Bill, which grants the 36 months to 48 months of education benefits. And this is going to be um, eligible to any veteran that's seeking undergraduate or graduate degrees, any kind of credentials, and even on the job training. And so that's going to help you guys. That's what you are going to want to use. Um, and so, um, so you know what's really great is that they uh, they increase the GI Bill um, for um, the for student payments to veterans um, that have served less than twelve months. Um, so as long as you have served for at least ninety days you'll be eligible to receive 50 to 60% of this benefit. Um, 
And that can result into, um, like it says up there, about $2,300 a year. So which is um, a, a huge amount of money to be able to put towards school. Um, and then for anyone that is pursuing the STEM degrees that are going to take a little bit longer because it takes more classes to graduate from those, um, there's going to be um, kind of an extension that was created um, for, um, for those degrees. Now, if you have any questions on your own benefits, what status you're at, how much you have left, call this GI Bill number that's listed at the bottom. You can also go to the website too, but they're gonna be able to give you um, exact information on, um, on where you're at with your GI Bill benefits. Um, and then you can always call us after that too if you have other questions as well. Okay, so this is a really great tool. This is right on the VA website. Um, you can either just Google GI Bill comparison tool or you can go to the VA website and then search it from there. But this is so you can get information on whatever school that you are wanting to attend. So you can search by the name of the school or you can search by location. Um, what we did here is um, there it looks like there's a couple different colleges here um, in uh, San Diego City College and then San Diego State. So let's see here. Yeah, actually, I want to go to this slide, too. So this one, I looked a little further. I kind of I try to take some schools. Um, that were kind of all across California. So I did a city college in the Bay Area. Um, a state school in San Diego, and then a UC um, in Northern California up in Davis. So I've highlighted and circled a couple of things. The housing benefit amount is going to change, and that's because it depends on where you live. Um, that's that's how much the stipend is going to be. Um, now, what's really neat, though, that I like is it tells you how many students are using this. So as you can see at, um, at City College, there's 1,300 students using this. At the state school in San Diego, um, almost 1,800 and 530 students are utilizing this um, at um, UC Davis. Um, I just checked all these this week. So these are all accurate numbers as long as the GI Bill website keeps everything up to date, of course. Um, but that's really great. A lot of people are using these benefits, which um, which we always want to reiterate to you guys that um, you know, you always want to take advantage, take advantage of as many benefits as you can, because if people are not using the benefits, they're going to go away. But if everyone is taking advantage of these benefits there, that means that hopefully they are only going to grow and just get bigger. So that way over time, they're even better. So when our dependents go to use them, hopefully, um, they'll be even bigger and better for them. Okay. So, um, we love to have visual aids in our presentations and this just kind of shows you a snapshot of how much um, school can be. College is expensive. So um, um, yeah, college is just really expensive. So that's why the tuition fee waiver for dependents is really great. Being able to utilize your GI Bill properly is really great. Um, and we kind of want to talk to you guys a little bit about that. Um, now, um, we kind of mentioned these the, the STEM degrees. There is an actual STEM scholarship. And um, for those of you, gosh, I'm sorry, I've been using the acronym the whole time, but science, technology, engineering, and math degrees, those ones all take longer. Um, but there is a, um, a, a scholarship called the Edith Norse Rogers STEM Scholarship. And uh, this was created to encourage veterans to pursue these fields that take a little bit longer to graduate from. But um, it gives them more resources and um, extends their, um, it extends their, um, benefits so that way they can finish um, their degree and graduate still using their GI Bill. Now, um, the STEM scholarship can't be matched with any yellow ribbon programs, and you cannot transfer this scholarship to your dependents. So if you are transferring your GI Bill, excuse me, to a dependent, that is something that you have to do before you exit the military. Um, but if you are doing that, um, you can't transfer, um, they are not able to access the STEM scholarship. That's only for veterans. Okay, so we have what's called Chapter 35, Survivors and Dependents Educational Assistance, DEA program. Um, this is going to offer dependents um, up to 45 months of educational benefits. And um, the way that you're eligible for this, if you are a dependent of a veteran or service member that is permanently and totally disabled due to a service-connected disability or has died while on active duty um, or as a result to a service-connected disability. Um, you do have to apply with this with an application. This is the form right there um, that you can, you can click on it when you get this presentation. If you have any questions on this, um, please call us and ask us about this. We're more than happy to talk to you about this. Um, this is um, a program that's definitely utilized a lot more than it's talked about. And it's a, it's a really great benefit. So if you qualify for it, 
um, we'd love to talk to you about it and make sure that you're able to access it. Um, a little bit more on chapter 35. Um, so this is an this is an education benefit that is for eligible spouses and children of certain veterans. Um, with chapter 35, you still have to pay tuition, fees, books, all those things, but you do get that, um, you do get that stipend um, every month. So okay, so then there is what we like to call VR and E. And um it used to be called VOC rehab or vocational rehabilitation. Uh, but now it is it's still VR and E. Um, but um they uh they changed the name to veteran readiness and employment or chapter 31. So this is another really great program to kind of extend um, your um, your education benefits. So you do have to have at least a 10% disability rating um, to be qualified to receive vr &E. um, But if you are um, able to qualify, um, it's a really great benefit. Here are some of the things of vr &E, um, that they provide. And um, this is actually... Um, we talk about an education, but it's really an employment benefit, but it's, we talk about an education because it's, it's a way that you can get more school. So if you are running out of your GI bill, um, you can, you do have to have some, you have to have at least one day of your GI bill left. But, um, if you are running low on your GI bill, you can see if you qualify for this, basically, if you need to have, um, more schooling, um, based on a disability to be able to, um, further in your career, um, they will help you with benefits in order to pay for that schooling. So um, it is something you have to apply for. CalVet, unfortunately, doesn't have any jurisdiction to approve you or deny you or anything like that. Um, this is where you apply. Um, it's a form number. It's another VA form number. You can find it on the VA website. We can um, let you know where it is as well. Um, and then you send it to this address. Um, if you have any questions at all on that, we can um, we can try to help you out. You can also call that 800 number. They are really knowledgeable um, and they can definitely help you out on that. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, kind of utilization of benefits because we've been talking about, oh, you know, you have all like the STEM degree, you need more, you need more help for that to, you know, to be able to finish all the units that you're in. So um, how do you do that? Um, because in order to graduate with a bachelor's degree, you have to have 120 credits. And um, this has to be, um, it can't include any of the remedial courses, the courses that don't count, like your, you know, your underwater basket weaving, that's not going to count towards graduation. These have to be all 120 actual units that count towards your degree. So um, if you're considered full time, that means you are going 12 units in the fall, 12 units in the spring, and then six units in the summer. However, um, the GI Bill only covers 116 units total. So you have to figure out how you're going to cover those extra four units or how you're going to cover if you want to go on, move on to a, um, a master's degree or a doctorate, something like that. So we want to give you guys kind of some tips and tricks on kind of how to um, stretch out your benefits as best as you can. And again, if I'm moving too fast and you guys have more questions later, definitely call us and we'd be more than happy to go through stuff with you. So um, tip one is um, take more than 12 units. So um, you could, instead of taking four classes, which is considered full-time, you could bump that to five classes or 15 units um, because then you would graduate a little bit faster if you're taking one extra class um, every semester. However, you want to be careful with that because if you if you already have a really heavy workload, you don't want to add on another class that is either A, going to drive your GPA down or a class that you're not going to be able to handle with um, your current workload and whatever else you have going on besides going to school. So just make sure that that is um, a good move for you if you are adding on another class. Now, on the other hand, if you, um, you could also stretch out your benefit by only certifying at three quarters time. And what I'm, oh, oh goodness, that, uh, that went down, the explanation tab went down. Anyways, um, so what we mean by that um, is if you, if you certify it three quarters time, that means you say you're taking 12 units, which is considered full time. So if you only certify um, or account for just um, nine of those units or three out of the four classes, you're going to get less stipend every month because you're only signing up for three of the four classes that you're using. Um, but it'll stretch out your benefit a little further. So if you're able to get a little bit less funds every month, then that'd be a way that you could um, you could stretch out your GI Bill a little bit. Now, um, you can also participate in a work study. 
And what a work study is, is basically like an, a paid internship. Um, what's really great about the work studies is you are, um, you're getting paid. Um, oh, see, I knew this slide was somewhere. I, I'm sorry, some of our slides are a little mixed up. Um, anyways, okay. So prepare, um, pre participate in a work study. Um, this is important because you don't get that BAH help between um, semesters or quarters when you're on break, summer break or um, or winter break, something like that. Um, and going in the work study, that means that you're going you're going to have extra money. It's um, it is tax free, so you don't have to account that um, as part of your income, which is really great. And it's usually a more flexible work schedule because the supervisors in the work studies know that you're really there to further your education and get school done. So um, they're gonna be a little more flexible with you. Times to coming in, maybe they'll let you do your homework and study um, on time um, while you're while you're working, things like that. So um, it's always a really great idea to participate in the work study. Okay, so um, our next tip is knowing the difference between a withdraw versus an F. And um, knowing the difference between these two is really huge. Um, Knowing, uh, so a withdraw, if you don't know what it is, is when you start a class in the fall, you have a couple weeks, where um, you can um, take the class aside, well, maybe it's not for you and you can drop it. Um, however, so if you withdraw from the class, um, say you um, you had four classes or 12 units. Well, if you withdraw from a class, that means you only have three classes now. So you may have to pay back um, part of your BAH that you are receiving because you dropped that class that you're accounting for. Um, so you could lose money on that. However, if you don't um, say you're in a situation where you're in, you're taking this class, but you, um, you do not want to take it anymore. Either, you know, you're not going to be successful and get a passing grade or something's going on in your personal life. And it's just, it doesn't work for your schedule right now, but maybe, um, maybe it's a better idea to earn the F to fail the class because your uh, that won't affect your stipend on your, um, that you're getting from the GI bill. Um, however, that's going to affect your GPA. You're probably going to have to redo the class again. So if you are in a situation where you're not sure, not sure what to do about a class, what we recommend is that you go to a career counselor or a veteran resource center. I'm going to tell you what that is in just a second. Um, and talk to somebody that's on campus, um, only because you can talk about your personal scenario. Everyone's scenario is different and a withdrawal versus an F is going to be different for everybody. Um, an F could be better for someone or a withdrawal could be better for someone. It just depends on what the uh, what the particular scenario is. So um, the last tip that we um, suggest is utilizing the veteran resource centers. You guys, these places are almost as amazing as our veteran resource books. Um, they are like gold. I like to say that. Um, what's so great about them, there's first of all, there's one on every single college campus. Um, every um, community college, state school, and UC should have one. Um, we, my team on Caltech, we've been to many of them. We do lots of presentations at the VRCs on these campuses. It's basically, um, it's another room in the campus, another classroom or a hall, something like that. It's a space where veterans can go. The people running it that are working there are either work studies, interns, so they are veterans or dependents, or the people working there running it are veterans or dependents. So they're going to know about veteran and dependent things and stuff. So if you have questions, that's where you want to go. Also, this is kind of a place like go for the camaraderie, stay for the coffee. Um, you're going to be able to be with like-minded people, um, people that are maybe in your situation. Maybe you are going to school a little later in life because you exited and now you're back in school and there are a lot of these young kids in school right now, but maybe at the VRC, you're going to meet um, more adults maybe around your same age range that also were in the military and exited a little bit later and now going back to school. Um, so you'll get to meet new people, you'll get to um, talk to new people. And then also there is always like a fridge full of like waters and snacks and there's coffee and there's all kinds of things. There's a bathroom that's probably cleaner than the other campus ones. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of great things and it's, it's all free to veterans and their dependents. So this should really be your first stop at any college campus that you go to. Um, and it's kind of a place where you can go and hang out. There's printers, um, you can hook up your laptop or there's computers. If you don't have a laptop, you need to do stuff on there. Um, this is an actual VRC. I don't know where it is. I always say, I'm going to find out what campus this was on and I never follow up on that. I'm going to do that this time. But anyways, if you have questions about that, um, give us a call. But VRCs are a really great resource. Um, okay, so different some different financial assistance. I talked about a lot of 
um, the different financial assistance for, um, you know, per branch earlier. Um, however, um, you um, should always be signing up for FAFSA, which is financial aid. Um, this is going to um, help you to realize where you are and what you qualify for. Um, the California Promise, that is not a veteran or dependent thing. That's an anybody thing. That's a way that first time college students can go to community college for free. So you could technically go to call community college on the California Promise and then use your GI Bill for when you transfer. Um, scholarships, we talked an awful lot about scholarships earlier. And oh my gosh, they're everywhere. You can Google pretty much anything about a scholarship. I'm um, one of 10 children. What kind of scholarship can I get? Um, I am, I don't know, you could look up anything. I grew up in Northern California. I grew up in Southern California. What kind of scholarship can I get for that? There's scholarships for everything. Um, there's also the yellow ribbon program. If you are wanting to go to a private school that costs a little bit more, the VA kind of intervenes with this yellow ribbon program and helps you out with that. If you are in that scenario and um, are needing more assistance from a private school, call us and we'll walk you through all of that. Okay. Then there is this like awesome benefit that CalVet offers, the college tuition fee waiver for veteran dependents. Um, I meant, gave you a little snapshot of what it is, um, but there are four ways to qualify. Like I said, this is a way for your dependents to go to be able to go to college at any um, community college, state school, or UC and not have to pay the tuition and fees to go there. They don't get that monthly stipend like the GI Bill does for veterans, but this is a way that dependents can go to school and waive those fees. There are four ways to qualify, four plans. You're either qualify for plan A, B, C, or D. Plan A is going to state, um, oh, well, and first of all, before I get into the plans, um, the veteran themselves does not have to live in California. The dependent does have to be a California resident. So if, you're, if your dependent wants to go to school in California and is not yet a resident, contact the school directly that they want to go to because every school kind of is different and has a little bit of their own jurisdiction on um, on um, what residency means to them. Some schools might want six months. Some schools might want a year. Either way, um, you will you should be able to qualify and they should be able to let you know. Okay, so plan A states that the veteran is 100% service-connected disability um, and that the dependent, um, you need to be under the age of 27, um, but there is no monetary limit. So they can have a full-time job. The reason why I say that is because on plan B, like Bravo, the, uh, the veteran just has to have a service-connected disability rating established, zero to 100. The dependent, there's no age limit. They can be any age. However, there is a monetary limit. They cannot have a full-time job. Um, currently, right now, until the end of this spring, um, either spring semester or spring quarters, um, it is going off of um, the dependent would not be able to have made more than what's considered the national poverty level which right now is about 14,500. So we would usually say, make sure your dependent is not bringing in more than $1,000 a month. Um, however, next fall, um, we are going to be using what's considered the national California poverty, I'm sorry, not national, the California state poverty level, um, which is um, a little over 19,000. So a little bit more of a threshold, but not much more. So basically your dependent can't have a full-time job. However, you can be putting funds in your dependent's account. That's not counted. They're just gonna ask for your tax forms for your dependent at the beginning of the year to prove that um, what how much money they made. Um, plan C is for, um, for those that are in the National Guard and plan D is for Purple Heart recipients. So if you have questions on any of these plans or how to qualify your dependent, please call us. We'll be more than happy to go over everything and anything that you have questions on. Um, oh, this is just talking about um, effective this year, um, plan B incomes. Um, the student's adjusted gross income will be the um, California poverty level versus the national one that's a little bit less. Okay, so there's also this scholar share opportunity. This is not a CalVet thing. This is not a federal VA thing. This is just a way to save money um, scholar share. You can get a scholar share in any state um, for your children. It's basically just a way to save money for your kids to utilize for school. Um, if you uh, have this account and say you've saved fifteen thousand dollars for your child over the years, and they decide they don't want to go to school, you can transfer that to somebody else in your household. So if you have questions on that, this gentleman, Aaron Lester, he is the man to talk to. He knows all the answers about scholar share. Like I said, it's not a Calvet or a um, or a federal VA program. It's just one that we um, that we would recommend because it's always a good idea to save for school. 
Um, there is also um, this new really great resource. I know we're getting close on time here. I'm not going to take too long on the next section. Um, I, I know we're getting a little late on time here, but okay. So we have this military articulation platform or acronym for that is MAP. And this is an amazing program, you guys. Probably most of you that you were in the military, you probably took classes um, or courses, things like that. Now, if you get those transcripts and you take them to, if you're, this is only for community colleges, of course, but if you take them to your community college that you are going to go to, you say, here, here's my JST, my joint services transcript. Um, what classes did I already take that will count towards my degree? And guaranteed there are classes that you took that are probably in your major. You don't have to take them again. And then that stretches your GI bill further. That stretches your funds further, which is so great. So um, if you guys took classes, this is a whole lot of verbiage on this. Call us. We can go over it with you. Currently right now, uh, I think it says on one of these slides, um, 76 out of the 116 community colleges are on board with this program. Hopefully by next year, um, our folks that are taking care of this are down in um, at Norco College um, in Southern California. Um, they're going around and talking to all these campuses and trying to get everyone on board. So that way these courses and colleges or courses and classes that you guys took while you were in service now can count towards your degree outside of service. How great is that? Really great program. Um, so um, I just kind of want to talk very briefly about the higher education system in California. I'll go through this really quick. Um, and like I said earlier, um, we love to have visuals. This is kind of just a visual of the education hierarchy. So basically at what level um, of college you get what degree at basically. Okay, we're so lucky in California because um, we have 10 UC campuses in California, you guys. Um, only nine of them are undergraduate classes. I usually like to make this a poll or a game to tell me um, who can um, figure out which college campus isn't listed on here but the 10th campus is actually UC San Francisco because it is um, not an undergraduate campus. It is only for uh, your master's degrees. Okay, um, not only do we have the 10 um, UCs in California, we have 23 state schools in California, which is so great. They are scattered all over California. There's a state school for everybody. Um, and beyond that, we are pretty much the luckiest state because we have 116 community colleges, you guys. That is just absolutely amazing. There's basically a college in uh, just everywhere that you go to in California that you can access classes at. A lot of them do online stuff. So there is so many ways that you can um, further your education and continue your education. Um, and 15 of these colleges offer some sort of certificate like a BA or a BS degree. Okay, so why community college? Um, usually it's it's much cheaper, obviously. Um, there are transfer agreements that you can say, um, okay, I'm going to take all of these classes. I wanna major in this major, so I wanna go to this college. Say you wanna um, transfer to a state school, and actually that's what I did. I met with my educational counselor. You can go to the VRC, you can go to the education counselor and admissions, um, talk to them. They basically have a, um, a contract with you. You're gonna um, finish these classes with this sort of um, grade point average, and then you will be into that state school or that UC. It's a contract agreement to get you to further your education and finish your degree um, beyond um, your general education. Um, what's also really great about California community colleges is as a veteran, you get four years priority registration. That means you get to register for all your classes a week before um, non-veterans, which is so great because Classes fill up quick. They're all impacted, but you get to sign up first. That way you can finish those 116 units that are covered with the GI Bill, plus those extra four units that you have to take to get to your um, to get to your bachelor's degree at 120 units a little bit faster. Um, this is where you apply to um, community colleges in California. This is the website. Uh, this is the transfer path. I kind of mentioned it already. If you guys have questions on that, just call us. We can talk to you about it. Um, so this is our contact information. Um, this, these are emails address, Tara and my email address. That 800 number is where you can get us. We literally do answer our phones. This is my work phone. Um, and then we always like to put the veteran crisis line, um, on here as contact information. Um, you just dial 988 and for veterans, you press one. Um, this is a national number. It used to be a very long 1-800 number and they've, um, they are now have it down to just three numbers. So. 
Um, if you are in need, maybe you'll be in a situation where you're with someone and um, they are in need. Um, it's always a good idea. Um, I'm going to turn things over in just a second to Tara. Um, but real quickly, before we go through some of the questions, I just want to share, this is the last slide, I promise, guys. Um, these are just the upcoming virtual workshops that we have. I told you guys about um, lots of really amazing topics next month. And um, we still have one left. We're going to talk about that MAP program that I just told you guys about. We're going to talk all about it um, next week um, on um, February 29th, which is Leap Day. So MAP program on Leap Day, don't forget. Um, these are all free. Just sign up how you did today. Um, and then a slew of other... Um, um, webinars next month on all kinds of really great stuff. So um, I'm going to put it back here um, while we're answering questions. That way um, you guys see our contact information, but um, how are we doing on questions, Tara? Well, yeah, I've I managed to answer all the question and answers and we have ran out of time and I did put my personal contact information in the chat. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me directly and I'll get back to you today. Okay. Well, um, I, I, yeah, I don't really, I want to make sure we're um, adhering to everyone's time here. We just really appreciate you guys coming and joining us. And um, I know this was a lot of information, but contact us if you need anything. And thanks so much for being here. Thank you, everybody.